Okay, so picking up with example four. Picking up with example four. Now notice as we kind of get more and more into the examples, the uh, the prompts that were given, the information for the questions kind of get longer and longer. And the last one has a lot of numerical information. And a lot of, uh, you know, AP Chem is being able to, to kind of sift through and, and pick out the information and know what the heck you're supposed to do with the numbers that get thrown at you. So the more you practice with the questions at the end of the chapter, the, the better you'll get at this. So here we go. Example four. Specialized cells in the stomach release hydrochloric acid to aid digestion. If they release too much, the excess can be neutralized with an antacid. A common antacid contains magnesium hydroxide, which reacts with the acid to form water <coughs> and magnesium chloride solution. As a government chemist testing commercial antacids, you use a tenth of a molar hydrochloric acid to simu simulate the acid concentration in the stomach. How many liters of stomach acid react with a tablet containing a tenth of a gram of magnesium hydroxide? So what is the first thing you think you might need to do to solve this problem, Kai? Write a balanced equation. Absolutely. Do the balanced chemical equation. So take two minutes, see how far you can get with the balanced equation. We have magnesium hydroxide. Reacting with the acid. And the acid they are referring to there is hydrochloric. This is a neutralization reaction. So we make a salt, magnesium chloride, and water. When you put hydrogen and hydroxide together, that, that is water that's produced there. Um, it looks like we need a two. Uh -oh, more than that. So I have to have a two here to take care of that. So that gives me four. And then you just I'm looking at this one. Two <coughs> and then a two in front of HCl. Does that get it? Yes. Yep. Four, two, two. Okay, good. Alright, so I've got my balanced reaction. Um, now, what piece of information there? I've got a molarity of hydrochloric acid and a mass of magnesium hydroxide. So what what do I do now? Of magnesium of hydroxide. No. The two things 
I, I'm asked about, I, I want to know, my question is how many liters of stomach acid? So I, I'm trying to find out something about this. I want to know how many liters of this ultimately. I'm given information about the molarity of this, and I'm given information about the mass of this. So which of those two pieces of information, the molarity of the mass, would you think you might want to start off with? The mass, somebody says quietly, okay. And where am I going with that mass of magnesium hydroxide? Moles of? If I start with the mass of magnesium chloride, or I'm sorry, magnesium hydroxide, okay, I can convert that to moles. calculated that about 58 grams for that molar mass. So now I'm in moles of magnesium hydroxide. <coughs> Where do I want to go from there? Uh, if the ratio of the moles of the hydrochloric acid. Absolutely. I can find out how many moles of hydrochloric acid would be used to neutralize that amount of magnesium hydroxide. So uh, these numbers are the coefficients. So I have two uh, moles of hydrochloric acid for every one mole of magnesium hydroxide. Now I'm given a molarity here. See, I can go ahead and, and calculate this out to grams. But molarity, remember, I'm dealing with moles and liters. So I probably just want to stop here and leave this value in moles so that it fits nicely in my molarity calculation. I could convert it to grams, but then I'm going to have to convert it right back to moles. So I'm going to stop and solve here. So I have uh, 0.1 uh, grams divided by 58 uh, times 2. 0 0.003. There you go, 0 0.0034. Did you say again why you stopped there? Yes. Write this down because I don't have good luck when I try to write and talk. And say. I know that I'm going to have to use this molarity in part of my problem to figure out um, to figure out how many liters of stomach acid reacted, okay. and and so my molarity formula is moles over liters. So I don't need anything in grams to work with the molarity formula. So although I could convert it to grams, I'd just end up when I try to get when I get back to this formula, I'd have to just end up backing up to moles. So although it wouldn't be the end of the world and you could still get there from there, it'd just be extra work. <coughs> and who wants that? Okay. So the question is how many liters? Well I have a number of moles and I have a molarity, and if I put those in, I'm gonna know the number of liters. So my molarity is Point one zero. My number of moles is point zero zero three four. And then I can solve that for my number of liters. stands for moles over liters. So the moles cancel and one over one over liters, my final answer is going to be in liters. So it's 0 0.0034 divided by 0 0.1, which is uh, 0 0.034. Leading zeros are not significant. I hate significant. <laughs> <laughs> so you multiply it by liters to move it over and then divide it by the molarity, molarity. to solve you for liters. Correct. So you can't just divide by the, the moles. 
by both sides by the moles? Because it's, I thought it was being multiplied. I got the different answer, so obviously not. <coughs> you know, the, um, that's why it's probably best to set it up and actually do the algebraic manipulation. Because when you're dividing by your variable, that's mm -hmm. a different ball. Code. So I always like to get anything I'm dividing by, I like to get that off the bottom before I even try to think about how to solve the problem. And that's easily fixed by multiplying both sides by that, and then it's off the bottom. You're not looking at fractions anymore. So it seems less upsetting. All right, let's look at the fifth, and typically the, as the examples, oh, we're doing a you try it, sorry. Okay, this is a comparison. So we're going to kind of go along the same. I'm going to talk about the U try before I turn you loose on it. This is going to be a similar type of calculation, um, but it's for a different uh, base. Another active ingredient found in some antacids is aluminum hydroxide, which is more effective at neutralizing stomach acid, magnesium hydroxide, or aluminum hydroxide. And then you're given a hint. Effectiveness refers to the amount of acid that reacts with a given mass of antacid. You already know the effectiveness of point, uh, a tenth of a gram of magnesium hydroxide. So in other words, you're going to repeat the same process from example four, but the only piece that's different is using aluminum hydroxide, and you should start with the same t amount, the tenth of a gram, and you're going to repeat a similar process. So I'm going to give you like four minutes to work on that. And you're going to have to start with a new balanced reaction because aluminum is positive. I'm going to stop the tape while just so my memory card doesn't fill up.